Sagan once said, somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known. Good morning. On behalf of Sun City School, it is my pleasure to welcome each and every one of you to the grand finale of the Everyday Science Contest. Science can best be described as a candle in the dark. In the words of the great scientist Stephen Hawking, the greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance, but the illusion of knowledge. Today's event is meant to ignite the scientific temper in all of us so we never become victims of superstitions or opinions and learn to differentiate between beliefs and facts. That is a key life skill, isn't it? This scientific temper, in fact, lies at the very heart of human progress. From Marie Curie to Einstein and Stephen Hawking, scientists have contributed to our world in unimaginably significant ways spearheading changes that no one had fathomed were even possible. And now, without any further ado, let us commence today's special event with an invocation of divine blessings. Everyday Science Contest, organized and sponsored by the Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell, invites students to relate scientific terms and concepts with their daily lives. The objective of the program is to make science relatable and enjoyable to everyone and to invoke curiosity and foster a love for science through real life applications and creative presentations. After the successful completion of the preliminary rounds held in 10 individual schools in the month of December 2023. The two winning teams of each school would be competing in the grand finale being held here today at Sun City School. The winning teams of this competition will be awarded with the winner's trophy, a certificate, and a cash prize of rupees 10,000 to commemorate their achievement. The runner-up team will be awarded with the cash prize of rupees 5,000 along with the certificate and trophy for their outstanding performance. The Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell aims to motivate, handhold, and nurture school students' bright ideas and innovations, and fund these selected innovations to build products, technology, and startups. The order of the school presentations will be Uttam Girls School, Ghaziabad. <laughs> Sun City School, Sector 54, Gurugram. Presenting on the topic, Newton's third law of motion, we now invite Team A, comprising of Vanya, a grade 10, and Ananya Tyagi, a grade 10. Let's welcome them on stage. Hi, Ananya. Hi, Vanya. I see you have a project here. Can you tell me about it? Surely. It's a prototype of air pressure water dispenser. Wow, that sounds interesting. Can you show me how it works? Okay. An air pressure water dispenser is a device that uses compressed air to push the water upwards from the container or a bottle through the straw. Don't you remember about it? 
we discussed about it in the previous class. Yes, now I can recall. An air pressure water dispenser is a device that consists of a pump mechanism that pressurizes the air in the container, hence pull, forcing the water out of the container when the valve is open. Such dispensers are often found in environments where electricity is not available or where portability is important, such as camping trips or emergency situations. Good morning, everyone. Today, I, Vanya, and I, Nanya, of grade 10 from Uttam School for Girls, are here to present the prototype of air pressure water dispenser and enhance your learning of Newton's third law of motion. Do you know the major principle behind this activity is Newton's third law of motion? Yes, that's right. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The force of these two forces are always equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. The action and the reaction forces always act on two different objects simultaneously. Don't you remember the air pressure water dispenser kept in the corridor of our school's building? Air pressure water dispensers are everywhere, be it in our schools, homes, offices, hospitals, etc. An air pressure water dispenser, when the air is released inside the air pressure water dispenser, the air exerts a pressure which is exerted on the walls, the inner walls of the container, which pushes the water out of the container through the straw. But this is just a prototype. Is it also used at a larger scale? Yes. An air pressure water dispenser at a larger scale is also used at a, as a commercial water dispenser. Newton's third law of motion has great fundamental importance as it helps us understand how various forces around us interact with each other. Now, we'll explain to you why it's significant. Vanya, I heard that the conservation of momentum is related to Newton's third law of motion. Can you explain it to us? Yes, Newton's third law of motion is closely related to the conservation of momentum. As when two bodies interact, the conservation of momentum remains total, same. And the total amount of momentum by two objects or the two bodies remains constant. Ananya, is Newton's third law of motion also used in designing and engineering? Yes, many engineers and designers master the concept of Newton's third law of motion while designing their designs, hence optimizing the chances of efficiency, safety and stability. Apart from uh, complicated designing and engineering, is Newton's third law also relevant in our day-to-day -day life scenarios? Yes, Newton's third law of motion is also used in countless applications which is related to everyday scenarios, such as walking to driving a car. When we walk, the foot pushes the ground backward and the ground pushes our foot forward, propelling our body to move. Ananya, can you give me some more life examples? I promise I won't try to launch it to myself in the orbit. Many natural phenomena such as propulsion of a rocket, movement of celestial bodies and recoil of a gun can be explained using the Newton's third law of motion. Overall, Newton's third law of motion is crucial for understanding the motion of objects, the behavior of objects and understanding a wide range of natural phenomena. Air pressure water dispensers, also known as hand pumps, I have various applications. Ananya, is air pumps like a superheroes of water dispensers? As when we need water in picnics or desert, it helps us to provide clean water. Water dispensers are mainly used to disperse water from large containers or bottles, especially in environments where water is not available. Vanya, do water dispensers act as a backup plan when the water is not available? Yes, in emergency situations such as water outages or natural disasters, when electricity, electric pumps are not in function, it can also be used as a manual pump. Water dispensers are also handy in our many outdoor activities such as camping, hiking, picnics, etc. Because during this, these activities, sometimes we don't have access to water resources. In such cases, water dispensers help us to pump water from river, rivers, lakes, etc. Are water dispensers also used in filtration? Yes, such as remote areas, if we think that in remote or rural areas where infrastructure is not that developed for water, uh, for water supply, there at that time water pumps or the air pressure water dispenser works for providing clean water to the people out there. In parting, let us carry forward the lessons of Newton's insatiable curiosity and his boundless intellect. For the vast ex expanse of knowledge, there's always room for one more apple to fall. Thank you.
Now, we have team B comprising of Nishtha Aswal of grade 10 and Vanya Mehta of grade 10. Please welcome them. Good morning, everyone. Today, I, Vanya, and I, Nishtha, are here to showcase our project of Newton's third law of motion. We are from Muttam School for Girls from grade 10. Alex, I was just lounging in the garden when suddenly an apple fell on me. Ouch, that must have hurt. Wait, is this about gravity again? You talk about gravity all the time. No, when the apple fell on me, it broke. Isn't that weird? Wait, if the apple fell on your head, then why did the apple break? You see the chair you are sitting on. You are exerting a downward force on the chair and the chair in return exerts a force on you, pushing you upwards. The similar concept is also used between the chair and the floor. So the chair is putting a downward force on the floor and the floor with the same force is pushing it up. You got that right. But what does this have to do with the apple falling on your head and breaking? Let me explain it to you with another example then. You see the string in the ball you tie. Why do you think the ball is being held up and not falling? Well obviously because the string is carrying its weight, right? No, the ball is being pulled down by gravity but an equal and opposite force is applied by the string which helps the ball to remain in place. So it's like a tug of war between gravity pulling it down and the tension in the string pulling it up. Yes, you got that right. But Precisely. Again. The tension in the string is what's counteracting the force of gravity here, keeping the ball in place. But again, what does this have to do with the apple falling on your head? There is no fun if I just tell you. I want you to figure it out on your own. You see the trampoline here? According to my discovery, everything in this world acts like a trampoline. When you jump on a trampoline, it bounces you back to the same height. Newton's third law of motion is everywhere. When you jump on a trampoline, you exert a downward force on the trampoline and the trampoline in return exerts a force on you, propelling you back up. Something like this? Yes, you got that right. So everything in this universe works on this phenomenon of force exchange, just like a trampoline. Yes, you got that right. I'm starting to get this a bit, but I'm not pretty sure. Let me explain it to you with another example then. You see this structure I made? Why do you think the pouch is not falling and holding itself? Well, because according to you, Newton, these two books are putting an upward force on the pouch and the pouch with the same force is putting it on downwards. But I have a question. In this example, there are two forces acting on a single object, while in all other examples, it was just a single one. Precisely. You are correct here. In this case, each book is providing an equal and opposite force that is counteracting the downward force of gravity. Okay, I'm starting to get this now. So it works on everything around us. By the way, do you remember the fun spoon races we used to have during our school with the spoon and the lemon? Oh, those were hilarious. We used to have a spoon and we had to balance the lemon on it. How do you think my law works there? Well, the lemon must put a downward force on the spoon and the spoon with the same force must push it upwards. Yes, you got that right. You are learning fast, my friend. You see, in this little exchange elsewhere, Newton's third law of motion comes in action. My hand exerts a force on yours and your hand exerts a force on mine. From this, we also conclude that action and reaction occurs on two different objects. So this should even work when a normally bounces ball on the floor. Yes, it does. This is what I call Newton's third law of motion, which states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So it really works on everything around us. It's like nature's way of saying you push and I pull. Newton's third law of motion does not only work on a playful high five or bouncing of a ball, it acts on much more, like hanging off a fan, sitting on a chair, or even with a photo frame with my photo, my photo with my apple tree. Totally. Whether it's the kicking back of the gun when the bullet fires, a rocket blasting off into space, or even something as simple as walking, Newton's law still holds true. It's, it's like, like universe's way of keeping things balanced. It's like a big natural dance where every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Even in the case of elastic collision, when the ball bounces off the floor, Newton's law still holds true. When the ball strikes the ground, it exerts a downward force on the floor and the floor with the same force pushes it up, propelling it back. Imagine you are dancing with a robot. When you move, the robot moves in the opposite direction with the same energy. Newton's third law of motion is like your ultimate dance partner. It states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It's the cosmic choreography of the universe. If there are two objects, object A and object B, if object A exerts a force on object B, then object B simultaneously exerts a force of equal magnitude, but in the opposite direction of object A. When the apple fell on Newton's head, it was the action, 
and an equivalent opposite reaction was made by his head, resulting in the apple to break. But I have another question. Isn't your law basically Archimedes' principle if done in water? You did state that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that when an object presses against a fluid, like water, the fluid presses back with an equal and opposite reaction. For example, when I put a ball in water, it floats back up. And as per Archimedes' principle, an object submerged in fluid experiences an upward buoyant force, which is equal to the weight of the water displaced by it. Nice question, Alex. This got me thinking as well. But I think when an object submerged in water, the weight of the object, let's call it Bob, is the action force which is applied downwards, and then reaction force by the flow of the container is applied in the forward, upward direction, which is equal and opposite in nature. So now I hope you and you understand my new invention of Newton's third law of motion. Let's spread this innovation across the entire world, embracing the principles of Newton's third law of motion. So in conclusion, you should look out. You never know when an apple drops some knowledge on you. Thanks. Thank you. We have Sun City School presenting on the topic, Newton's third law of motion. We now call upon Team A, comprising of Devita Mathur of grade 10 and Suhani Goyal of grade 10. Please welcome them on stage. A very good morning to one and all present here today. Today we, Suhani and Divita of class 10 of Sun City School Sector 54, present to you Newton's, Newton's Playground, Playground, a project that will forever alter your view of the world. Featuring Newton's third law of motion. Millions saw the apple fall, but Newton was the one who asked why. Firstly, let's understand some history. Suhani, you do know that we're here for physics, right? Yes, of course I know that, but there's a lot of history behind Newton's laws. In 1666, Newton presented his theories of gravitation at the young age of 23. In 1686, he presented his three laws of motion in the Principia Mathematica Philosophiae Naturalis. By presenting his three laws of motion, Newton revolutionized science. That was quite informative, but why don't we move on to some real-life examples? Okay, starting with a real-life example to present Newton's third law. Hey, what was that for? Okay, this is a perfect example of Newton's third law, which states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Over here, action and reaction refer to forces. If object A exerts a certain amount of force on object B, then object B will exert an equal amount of force on object A in the opposite direction. The action here was me hitting Devita, and her reaction was to hit me back. So, honey, that's not a good example. Okay, okay, fine. Why don't we move on to some examples in our daily lives? Firstly, playing basketball. When we dribble a basketball, it hits the ground with a certain force. The ground then exerts a force that is equal and opposite, and the ball bounces back. A rocket engine produces thrust through action and reaction. The engine produces hot exhaust gases which flow out from the back of the engine, and as a reaction, a thrusting force is produced upwards. When we walk or run, our feet exert a certain force upon the ground. This force is then reacted upon us as well by the ground, which allows forward motion. When we swing, we apply a forward push on the air in front of us. This is the action. The reaction is when the air applies an equal and opposite force on us, pushing us backwards. Divita, I just realized Newton's law can be applied to technology as well. Uh-oh, here she goes again. Trust me, it's a good example. Fine, what is it? Okay, my action is to post content on social media. My friend's reaction is to like and comment on my posts. No, just no. But I suppose you're right about the technology part. Newton's third law can be applied to tech-based gym equipment because these days, most gym equipment is fully based, which means Newton's third law can be applied during workouts. Not to mention, wheels and levers also follow Newton's third law of motion since they work on reaction force. True. Now for our first experiment, we will be displaying a catapult. A catapult is a ballistic device which is used to launch objects at a high speed. Wait, Divita, I wanted to make a joke about catapults. So, honey, all your jokes are a long shot. Get it? A long shot. Okay, this is, this is irrelevant. Let's move on to the aim of our project. The aim of our project is to prove that a catapult displays Newton's third law of motion when flinging an object. We use various materials for this project, including ice cream sticks, 10 of them, two of which are wide and eight of which are narrow, one eraser, and three rubber bands. 
So firstly, in order to make a catapult, we put together the pile of eight narrow ice cream sticks and we tie them at both the ends tightly. Now we take one wide stick and put it in between the top two narrow ice cream sticks like this. Then we take the other wide stick and we put it at the bottom of the pile. Now we use a rubber band to uh, tie these two wide sticks at the front end and this is what you'll get, a catapult. Now to understand the physics behind catapults, let's first look at its parts. Since we know that a catapult is a first class lever, we can say that this pile of eight ice cream sticks is the fulcrum, the stick at the top is the throwing arm, the stick at the bottom is the base and the uh, rubber band at the front is the counterweight. Now why don't we have a demonstration to display our catapult? Firstly, we take the eraser which is known as the weight of the payload and we will put it on top of the catapult throwing arm. Next, we will pull the throwing arm downwards. Then the stretched rubber band will have potential energy. When we release it, the rubber band goes loose. And then the eraser and the throwing arm are slung forward due to kinetic energy. Over here, the action was when we applied a downward force on the throwing arm. And the reaction was when the throwing arm applied an equal and opposite force on the eraser, thrusting it forward. Circling back to some history. In ancient times, the Greeks and Romans used catapults such as ballistas and crossbows. These were much, much larger with both the fulcrum and the throwing arm being huge. Due to this, more force was passed through the throwing arm to the object, and the object was slung much further. I assure you, if we were to throw an eraser from a ballista, it would go much further than our tiny catapult. Modern mechanisms using hydraulic pressure, tension, or other force to launch gliders, aircrafts, or missiles can also be called catapults. As a result, our theory is proved. Catapults use Newton's third law of motion. Our next project will be Formula One cars, the ultimate race. Formula One, commonly known as F1, is the highest level of international racing for open-wheel, single-seater formula racing cars sanctioned by the International Automobile Federation. Okay, okay. Flying cars, fact or fiction? Flying cars have mostly been seen in fiction through James Bond novels or Star Wars movies such as Attack of the Clones. I love Star Wars. The question is, can they be recreated in real life? That is what I want to prove today. So honey, how do you plan on making a flying car? I thought you were making a balloon car. Balloons fly, isn't it the same thing? Absolutely not. The aim of our project is to show that my car will win against Suhani's. Okay, no, we all know I'm gonna win, but this is irrelevant. The scientific aim of our project would be to examine the application of Newton's third law through vehicles. Firstly, my car, it uses kinetic and potential energy once again. When we wind the rubber band around the axle of the car, it creates elastic potential energy. Then releasing the axle allows the rubber band to quickly unwind, spinning the axle. Thus, potential energy converts into kinetic energy and the car races forward. Now, my car, the better one, is a balloon car. A balloon car basically uses air and compressed gases and stretched rubber, which is stored in the form of potential energy. When I blow air through the straw, it is stored in the balloon. This is potential energy. And once the air is released, this is converted into kinetic energy and the balloon car races forward. All right, let's now race our cars to see who wins. So this is the balloon car and that is the axle car. <laughs> okay, my car is clearly the winner. I told you it'd win, Devita. Fine, whatever. Anyway, in the rubber band car, the action was the uh, winding up of the axle and the reaction was on the wheels of the car in uh, the same amount of force that was uh, in the winding up of the axle. For the balloon powered car, the action was when the air rushed out of the balloon. This applied a force upon the surrounding air as we can notice. And then the reaction was when the surrounding air then applied a force upon the car, which is how you saw it went so fast forward. Hence, this race uh, used Newton's third law of motion in cars. Presentation intermission. Divita, I feel like watching some Bollywood movies. <laughs> and we're going off topic again? It's not off topic. I bet you Newton would have loved Bollywood classics like DDLJ. When Simran is running after Raj in the train, you can notice she's using Newton's third law because running does utilize Newton's third law, doesn't it? That's just one rare example. Not every Bollywood movie uses Newton's laws. Oh, really? What about Bahubali through the catapults, cannons, and bow and arrows? My personal favorite. Action and reaction. Okay, Suhani, let's put the weapon down. 
Next, we will be presenting Newton's travelogue. Everyone needs a vacation once in a while. We will be tra your travel agents. On our travel itinerary today, we have Hawaii, Switzerland, China, and outer space. Firstly, a trip to Hawaii. There's no vacation without a trip to Hawaii, right? And when you think of Hawaii, the first thing that comes to mind is swimming. When we swim, we push the water backwards with our hands, and the water, in turn, pushes us forward. This is using Newton's third law. Personally, I love scuba diving. One thing you'll observe within Hawaiian waters is the movement of jellyfish. Sometimes they squeeze the sides of their bodies, which pushes out a stream of water from the back ends of their bodies. This stream of water uh, applies an equal and opposite force on the jellyfish. Okay, with us, some of these jellyfish are poisonous, so why don't we move out of the waters and go into Switzerland, my personal favorite. Mountains and so much snow. What's, same here, what's your favorite snow activity? Does throwing snowballs at you count? No, my favorite activity is skiing. By digging your ski into the snow, you generate a force in the opposite direction pushing into your ski, as every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This allows motion and changes in direction. Okay, you know what, Switzerland is getting a bit too cold and skiing is so boring. I think I'm much more of a thrill seeker. You're just saying that because you keep tripping every time we go on ski trips. No, 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 I'm an expert skier. But anyways, why don't we go for some bungee jumping? China has a bridge known as the Zhang Zhaji Bridge, standing at 260 meters. Pretty high, isn't it? Not only is it the most magnificent glass bridge in the world, but it is also home to the highest bungee jump. No way I'm jumping from up there. Come on, Divita, for experiment's sake, a bungee or elastic cord does use Newton's third law. Because when a person falls from a bungee or cord, this is the action because the cord stretches. When we fall, we accelerate due to gravity. This is why the cord stretches. The reaction in this case, wait, the reaction in this case is when you're pulled upwards. See, I, don't, I know you don't like the falling part, but the pulling upwards, that could be helpful. Interesting, but no, I'd rather not die today. Thank you very much. <sighs> okay, fine. Fair enough. Our trip isn't over yet, though. I have the best location saved for last. We're going to outer space. Oh my god, how do you plan on doing that? With a rocket, which uses Newton's third law. It's broken pitch in a bit. Wow, okay. But I don't think I can miss on my gym time up there in space. I think I'll need to take a treadmill. It's okay, you don't need to take a treadmill. I don't think those will work in space anyway. We'll take along an AVET platform. Okay, what is that? An AVET platform uses a force pair to identify two interacting objects and the force in which direction is acting upon them. In this case, astronaut Sidney Williams applies a force upon the AVET platform, and the AVET platform, in turn, applies an equal and opposite force upon her. Cool, I think space has probably been my favorite trip so far, but why don't we whoosh down back to Earth now? Okay, with the conclusion of our trip, we also conclude our presentation, hopefully leaving you mesmerized, awestruck, and well-informed on Newton's laws. That's Thank you. Thank you, and Devita, signing off. Next, we have Team B, comprising of Vanya Khanna of Grade 12 and Sanvi Malotra of Grade 12 as well. Let's welcome them. Hello, Sanvi. Sanvi, where are you? I really need your help. What's the rush, Vanya? Why My physics teacher just told me I have this competition to go for tomorrow and I'm not at all prepared for it. It's something to do with Newton's third law of motion. And I know the basic concepts, but I don't know how to wrap my head around its applications. Could you please help me out, Sanvi? Okay, just calm down. I'll be over to help you out soon. Oh, thank God, Sanvi. You're such a lifesaver. Okay, let me practice till then. Okay, so Newton's third law of motion states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So let me practice from the top. Good morning to one and all present here today. Sanvi Malhotra and I, Vanya Khanna, from Grade 12 of Sun City School, would like to present to you Newton's third law of motion. Okay, Vanya, I'm here. Why are you in such a rush? Oh, God. I'm so sorry it took me long, but I had to stop by at school to get out everything ready for the presentation. Oh, no problem. But why do you got a balloon? I mean, a balloon is the most basic example of Newton's third law of motion. I mean, what really happens there? You just fill a lot of air inside a balloon, and then as soon as you release it, air gushes out from the bottom and fly ar flies around in the air like it just did. Sounds to me like you already know the application. Why do you ask for my help then? Because this is the most basic textbook example, and we need something more than that. 
we need something maybe a little more interesting, something a little more complex because you know, physics can't really be understood by just reading, writing or listening to people talk about it. We really need to understand and live the concepts. That's true. The real way to understand physics is to observe. So come on, why don't you pick something out from this pile of things I brought with me and we'll get started. Okay, that skateboard looks interesting. Why don't I start with that? The skateboard? Yes! You're going to choose the skateboard to call interesting after calling me basic for bringing a balloon. Yes, Sanvi, is that an issue? <sighs> Let's just get started. Okay. So when you try to ride the skateboard, as you can observe, you are pushing the ground in a backward direction. The ground then exerts an opposing force which brings you into motion in the forward direction. See, again, basic, what you called it. Another example here is the car, which can easily depict action and reaction. When I push this car in a backward direction, this is the action. And the reaction, well, observe it yourself. See, Vanya, physics, really easy. That's quite easy, actually. But physics being easy, that's a good joke. Well, after this example, you'll trust me on the fact that physics is easy. Come on, try out this ball. Figure out what okay. the activation is here. Mm, okay, let me see. Oh, Sandy, did you see? The ball bounced back in the opposite direction. But I didn't really see the equal reaction. I mean, what's the issue there? Is this ball broken or something? It's not the ball that's broken. And the forces that do act in this case are equal. It's just the fact that air resistance acts on the ball while it's trying to bounce back up, which doesn't bring it back to its original height. I'm sure if we were to perform this in the presence of vacuum, then the ball would come back to the same height that it was dropped from. See, physics is easy. Okay, sure, that's another good joke. Speaking of good jokes, I have a really funny one. It's gonna have you laughing on the floor, okay? So Newton was a really curious man, and one day he came across a sheep. The sheep was in motion, and he decided to see what would happen if he tried to stop the sheep. He realized that to stop the sheep, he had to apply an external unbalanced force on the sheep. And that's how he got the first law of motion, that an object in motion stays in motion until and unless an external and unbalanced force is applied on it. That was not funny, Sanvi. I'm not done, Vanya. You know, that wasn't the end to Newton's curiosity. He decided to see what would happen if he applied the force on the sheep. And you know what the sheep did? It went, meh, F is equal to MA. Oh God, it's Sandy. gold, Vana, it's gold. But that's still not the end. Newton, when he applied force on the sheep, he kicked the sheep. So the sheep kicked Newton back. And that's how he realized every, every action, action has an equal and opposite reaction. reaction. It's obviously. Amazing, Vana, I don't know how you're not laughing right now. It's still not funny. <sighs> well, whether you believe it or not, being a comedic genius is one of my talents. And I'd like to think that I'm decent at archery too. So why don't you try and figure out the physics behind archery? Okay, okay, let me try this one. So you mean when the archer, one such as you, pulls the string in the backward direction, it causes the arrow to get launched in the forward direction. Action and the reaction, is it getting launched? Exactly, just observe. You nice. have to admit, Vanya, I'm a really talented person. Okay, okay, now that we're at it and we're in the zone, let's get to the next example. Something such as the flying of a bird, maybe. So, as you can see here, we have a bird which is trying to fly in the air. And as soon as it flaps its wings, the air surrounding it gets pushed in the downward direction, causing the bird to get elevated up towards the sky. This is the action and the reaction is it flying. See, action, reaction. Vanya, I think it's getting a little too easy now. Let's up the level on our examples, why don't we? Come on, okay. come here. Where are you taking me? Just come with me, Vanya. Okay. This well looks interesting. Let's try this out. Come on, let's wait, draw wait, water. Wait. Why are we at a well? Priorities, you know, I have a competition to go to. You'll understand soon enough, Vanya. Come on, draw some water. Okay. Sanvi, it's really tough. I have to apply a lot of force just to pull this one bucket of water. Why so? Can you lend me a hand? Well, you're finally asking the right questions. When you try to pull up the bucket of water, the water is pulled in a downward direction due to the presence of gravity, which acts on us at all times. Because the gravity is acting downwards, you have to apply an upward force to pull the bucket. You pulling the pulley here is the action in such a manner, the action and the other string being lifted upwards is the reaction. 
See, Newton's third law, it's actually perfect. You know, that explanation seems like something right out of an Etsy Verma book. Oh my God, I despise that man. Really? I think it's funny you mention him. Don't, please, it's not funny. Everything is not funny. Him and his monkey questions have haunted me in my nightmares for two years straight. Not again. Please. Vanya, looks like you're going to be dreaming about me. No, Sonny, you can't be doing that to me today of all days. Come on, Vanya. You know just as well as I do that if you can crack an Etsy or my explanation, then you'll feel confident in yourself for tomorrow. That's definitely true. Okay. But what are we doing with the monkeys? Hang on, have some patience. If these two monkeys were to be suspended by the two ends of the pulley here, and suppose my monkey, the one without a banana, were to get to Vanya's monkey, the one with the banana, then can, do you have any ideas on how it would go about it? Wait, wait, wait. So you mean yours is the greedy one and mine is a little bit of the selfish one? Where are your priorities now, Vanya? Okay, okay, my bad. So, do you think your monkey should try climbing up the rope to reach to my monkey? Hmm, let's see what happens. Okay, let's see. When my monkey tries to climb up, it actually exerts a downward force on the rope. The pulley system then translates this force on Vanya's monkey and the monkey gets hoisted upward as a reaction force. See, it's similar to the working of a well. But you realize that once we do that, the distance between the monkeys doesn't really change. And it doesn't really help your monkey get the banana from mine. You know, as I've been saying at least for a while now, the physics is easy. The only thing that the monkeys have to do now is to let go of the rope and fall to the ground. So you mean gravity helps us again? Yeah, there you go. Now that they're on the ground, the two monkeys are free to fight over the banana in a tug-of-war-like situation. Oh, okay, okay, I get it now. So, you mean when they fight for the banana, what would happen is that let's say there's a rope between them and there would be some kind of a tension force acting in both directions. Is that what you mean? Exactly, but tension is not what we're talking about here. Action, reaction, Vanya. So the action in this case is my monkey exerting a force in the backward direction. And Vanya's monkey being pulled forward is a reaction. See, it's perfect, Vanya. But let's leave the monkeys alone. Okay, okay, that makes much more sense now. But enough with examples and applications. How about we make, you know, a complex or maybe an interesting experiment to verify Newton's third law and actually prove the equality of forces? Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay, let's see. So, here we take an example where we use two spring balances. Let's say we have one of 5 Newton and we have another one of 10 Newton. And we also take an iron rod or a stand. Sanvi, would you like to depict the experiment till the time I explain? Sure, go ahead. I see the student becomes the teacher now. Okay, okay, let's start. So, all we have to do is we have to gently pull the spring balance. Sanvi, can you please demonstrate it for us? Okay, so as soon as we gently pull the spring balance, the amount of force that is shown in one spring balance is equal to the amount of force shown in the other spring balance. Equal? Vanya, looks like you're not that good of a teacher. One of these reads 2 Newton and the other one reads 2.25. Oh, silly. Because you've taken just one reading. Why don't you take another reading? Until the time, let me explain that one. Okay, so what's happening here is that we have an experimental error. So to avoid this kind of an experimental error, we need to take a minimum of two or three readings because of excessive use and wear and tear of these objects in the physics lab. Wait, wait, I got it. Two Newton and two Newton. Exactly. You know, you're only, you were only able to do this because I'm a good teacher. Please, <sighs> sure. You need to get your big ego back down to the earth, Sandy. Earth is boring, Vanya. Me and my ego would like to fly off of here using this rocket right here. Before you go on your so-called Mars mission, why don't you try and explain the physics behind this one, Sandy? The launching of a rocket? I'm getting tired of doing everything around here. Anyway, rocket it is then. When we try to launch a rocket, when we turn on the engine, the gases exert a downward force. These downward forces create an upward opposing force which causes the launching of the rocket. A similar principle acts when we use a fire extinguisher. When we, t when we use a fire extinguisher, the CO2 runs out of the extinguisher in a forward direction. This forward force then generates an opposing backward force, which causes gentle tipping of the fire extinguisher. See, physics is everywhere, Vanya. There's no doubt about it. Exactly. Now you see, whether it is the launching of a rocket, drawing water from a well, or something simply like the bouncing of a ball, physics is present everywhere around us. 
and Newton's third law of motion reigns supreme, showcasing action and reaction forces every day around us. In every single thing that we do, there's physics. Thank you. With this, we complete the presentations on the topic Newton's third law of motion. And now it's time for the judge's opinion. And the runner-up is Sun City School, Sector 54, Gurugram. And the participants are Divata Mathur and Suhani Goyal. And the winner is Sun City School Sector 54 Gurugram once again and the participants are Vanya Khanna and Sanvi Malhotra. Congratulations to the winners.